Troglodyte. Noun, a person who is regarded as being deliberately ignorant. This is what I think of when I hear people say things like, all polls are trash, or a certain pollster is far right, or it's just a 1,000 person sample size. The truth is, polls are incredibly powerful at starting a conversation on public opinion, as some of our recent work has illustrated. But what is even more powerful is when a poll gets repeated over time, and I'm going to prove it to you. But first, let me take a moment to tease some of our upcoming work on election fraud in Arizona. A reader saw a mainstream poll that looked suspect, came to us to try to replicate the results, and in the next week or two, we'll be releasing those results, regardless of what the numbers are. For those of you who are dismissive about polls, this is how it's supposed to work. But what I have the pleasure of showing you today is the incredible work that our sponsors at Numbers USA have been funding for over three years. Every two weeks, we go out into the field and ask a set of 10 immigration-related questions. We then calculate an index number to track U.S. likely voters' opinions over time. I'll show you some of the questions, as well as numbers from the latest immigration run completed March 9th. Do you strongly favor, somewhat favor, somewhat oppose, or strongly oppose giving lifetime work permits to most of the estimated 12 million illegal residents of all ages who currently reside in the United States? 41% of U.S. likely voters at least somewhat favor the lifetime work permits, but 54% currently are at least somewhat opposed. Here's another. Should immigration-driven population growth be reduced to limit the expansion of cities into U.S. wildlife habitats and farmland? 47% of likely voters say yes, and only 26% say no. That's pretty incredible. A clear signal that voters acknowledge that immigration is potentially impacting U.S. wildlife and natural ecosystems. But this one is my personal favorite. On the question of illegal immigration, is the government doing too much or too little to reduce illegal border crossings and visitor overstays? 57% say too little, and only 14% say too much. 20% currently say the government is doing about the right amount. Wouldn't you like to see some history on that question? Here is the last year of data for those who say the government is doing too little. Remember my comment about polling and repeatability? This is a 1,250 person sample with a 3% plus or minus margin of error. That might sound large when you say it out loud, but if you look at the responses here, you can clearly tell there isn't a huge amount of variability. Clearly, a number of around 57% of likely voters say the government isn't doing enough to stop illegal immigration. But to illustrate the point further, here is the same data overlaid with a 7-point rolling average and the upper and lower 95% confidence intervals. There are a few points slightly outside the boundaries, though in my opinion, the later ones are partly due to the increasing signal. And that's another extremely important point about long-term and repeated polling. Public opinion does change over time. The rolling average in this chart has increased about three points in the last six months, showing that more voters think the government isn't doing enough to stop illegal immigration since then. But if you think that's a signal, look at this chart that shows the entire three plus years of history on this question. And look at that swing. When did it start? a week before the presidential election in November 2020. On that day, only 35% of voters said the government was doing too little to stop illegal immigration. And by March 19th, 2021, only five short months later, 59% of voters said we were doing too little. Only a little more than where we are today. But now let me show you something else that has come up recently following the global racial discussion spurred by our polling that shows 53% of black Americans agree that it's okay to be white. Demographic subgroups, although they are smaller and have a wider margin of error than the poll overall, are still incredibly meaningful. To illustrate that, here are the results for the same question, highlighting the percentage of Hispanic likely voters who think the government is doing too little to stop illegal immigration. And here are some things to notice. This group is on average about 13% of the 1,250 person samples for about an eight point margin of error. Now, when you hear that, you probably think it sounds incredibly wide, and you're right, it does sound wide. But if you pull more than once, like we do, you can see how incredibly stable the results are. Since they're described by a normal distribution, and the confidence interval is set wide enough to catch 19 out of 20 samples, and also check out how the shape of this is a little more flat than the graph we had for all voters. Why? Because during the era of Trump, 
Hispanic voters were actually more likely than all voters to say we were doing too little to stop illegal immigration. In fact, even today, Hispanic voters are just as likely as all voters to say the government isn't doing enough. I've talked about the overall index, incorporating the results of all 10 questions we ask about both legal and illegal immigration. So let me show you that now too. And if you're interested, you can follow our reporting on the bi-weekly immigration index at RasmussenReports.com, where you can also see the questions we ask, the current results, and the underlying crosstabs. Now again, the index is unitless and was set at a baseline of 100 when we started during December of 2019. The higher the number here, the more soft American voters are on both legal and illegal immigration. Now, President Trump was already making headway on his wall, and sentiments drifted around a bit. Likewise, coronavirus didn't seem to affect opinions much overall, though the numbers started ticking down considerably during the back half of 2020. My hunch is that some of that was driven by Trump's anti-immigration campaign rhetoric. But then again, the November election was called for Biden, and voters' opinion on immigration swung like a rudder, and by mid-2021 settled into about the level they're at now. There were some major ebbs and flows since then, and I suspect some of the coverage of migrant caravans had at least a little to do with it. But voters, by and large, remain just about as hard on immigration now as they did a few months into Biden's term. But why do we ask these questions over and over? Is it information overload? Our partners at Numbers USA actually use this information to attempt to achieve meaningful change on immigration policies by showing the bipartisan support that these issues have. Take E-Verify, for example. Here's the question. In trying to control illegal immigration, should the government mandate that all employers use the federal electronic E-Verify system to help ensure they hire only legal workers for U.S. jobs? As of the last reading, 66% of U.S. likely voters say yes, and only 19% say no. E-Verify is wildly popular and actually always has been for the last three years. We also sometimes get the chance to ask these questions at the state level, and the results are even more interesting, especially for areas where immigration is more of a concern. Here are the results from Florida asked this most recent November. 72% of Floridian likely voters said yes to E-Verify, and only 15% said no. That means voters favored implementing E-Verify by almost a 5 to 1 margin. And wouldn't you know it, here's a National Review headline from this February. DeSantis calls for universal E-Verify in Florida. I'll link this article in the description. It's a pretty good read, and it astutely points out that a lot of businesses have lobbied against E-Verify. And as we've illustrated, that's directly opposed to the will of the people. Now, what's the good news? E-Verify is already in some states, but it's also in various stages of implementation in others. And we'll increasingly get to see the impact on immigration levels, jobs, and the economy in general. Thanks for hanging out with us for this lesson in polling. Subscribe at Rasmussen Reports to see more coverage on immigration. And please check out our sponsors, Numbers USA, who I'll link in the YouTube description. As always, please like the video, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter. Thanks for watching. <laughs>